In the summer of 2024, the people of Earth were captivated by a drama unfolding high above in the vastness of space. The journey of Boeing's Starliner and its crew became a global headline. But sadly, it wasn't a tale of triumph and adventure. It was a story of failure. Fast forward to 2025, and the saga continues to draw attention, though the spotlight has shifted. The Boeing Starliner is no longer the star of the show. Instead, SpaceX's Crew Dragon has taken center stage. So, how did Crew Dragon end Starliner, even against NASA? Don't like this. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The Boeing Starliner spacecraft was meant to be NASA's second crewed vehicle for transporting astronauts to and from the International Space Station, ISS. However, instead of proving itself as a reliable alternative to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, it became one of the most embarrassing failures in modern aerospace history. The story begins in 2014 with the launch of the Commercial Crew Program, CCP. This initiative aimed to develop two independent American spacecraft capable of ferrying astronauts to and from the ISS. Instead of building the vehicles itself, NASA chose to fund private industry, awarding contracts to both Boeing and SpaceX. Boeing received $4.2 billion, while SpaceX was granted $2.6 billion to develop their respective crewed spacecraft. At the time, Boeing was considered a safe and reliable choice. As a well-established aerospace giant with decades of experience, it was expected to deliver a functional spacecraft without significant issues. In contrast, SpaceX was viewed as an upstart, a private company that, despite its ambitious goals, was still relatively new to human spaceflight. Many industry experts doubted whether SpaceX could meet NASA's rigorous safety and performance standards. However, as development progressed, the two companies took very different paths. SpaceX adopted an agile, iterative approach, constantly testing and refining its Crew Dragon spacecraft. By 2020, SpaceX successfully launched its first crewed mission, Demo-2, proving that its vehicle was not only viable, but also highly reliable. Meanwhile, Boeing struggled with repeated delays and technical failures. Starliner faced numerous delays, with its first crewed test flight originally planned for 2017. However, its development was plagued by a series of chaotic issues, including a failed orbital test flight in 2019. This flight ended in failure due to a critical software malfunction. The spacecraft's onboard clock was misaligned, causing it to fire its thrusters incorrectly. As a result, Starliner failed to reach the correct orbit and was unable to dock with the International Space Station, ISS. Had astronauts been on board, their lives could have been at serious risk. By the time Boeing finally launched its first astronauts aboard Starliner in 2024, SpaceX had already completed multiple successful human space flights. The stark contrast between the two companies underscored a fundamental shift in the aerospace industry, where innovation, efficiency, and iterative testing outperformed legacy experience and corporate reputation, even with a smaller budget. Unfortunately for Boeing, bad luck continued to follow Starliner. When the spacecraft carried astronauts to the ISS, the mission was intended to be a short demonstration lasting only 10 days, after which the vehicle would return to Earth for final certification. However, soon after reaching orbit, Starliner suffered severe technical issues that made a safe return impossible. Instead of a 10-day mission, the astronauts remained stranded in space for over eight months. The primary issues included propulsion system failures, leaks in the spacecraft, and concerns about whether its heat shield could survive re-entry. With no clear solution from Boeing, NASA faced a difficult choice, either continue troubleshooting in orbit with no guarantee of success, or find an alternative means of bringing the astronauts home safely. In the end, NASA decided that continuing to rely on Starliner was too dangerous, leading to the unprecedented decision to use SpaceX's Crew Dragon as the rescue vehicle. This was an unremarkable conclusion to a mission that had already disappointed the U.S. space program and, more importantly, dealt another blow to Boeing's reputation. The failure further damaged Boeing's already troubled standing. Once a dominant force in the aerospace industry, the company had spent years trying to develop Starliner and had received billions of dollars in funding from NASA. To be completely honest, everything I've just outlined might still not be enough to convince you how bad Boeing's Starliner really is, so let's compare it in detail with SpaceX's Crew Dragon. One of the most glaring contrasts lies in the life support and environmental control systems, which are foundational to astronaut safety and mission success. Crew Dragon boasts a sophisticated, fully automated system that meticulously regulates the cabin environment, maintaining optimal levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide, 
controlling humidity, and stabilizing temperature within a narrow, comfortable range. This precision allows astronauts to perform their duties without the distraction or risk of environmental instability, a luxury that Starliner failed to deliver during its troubled CFT mission. Starliner's propulsion issues, while primarily affecting its maneuverability, also cast doubt on the broader integration of its systems, including life support. Reports from the mission indicated that the spacecraft struggled to maintain the robust environmental consistency that Crew Dragon has consistently demonstrated across its operational flights. For Williams and Wilmore, whose mission unexpectedly extended from days to months, the reliability of Crew Dragon's life support was a critical factor in NASA's decision to bring them home aboard SpaceX's vehicle. The divergence extends to the spacecraft's control systems, where Crew Dragon's modern design philosophy starkly outshines Starliner's more antiquated approach. Starliner employs a traditional manual control setup, replete with physical switches and dials that harken back to earlier eras of spaceflight. While functional, this configuration feels increasingly out of step with the demands of contemporary missions, lacking the intuitive adaptability that modern astronauts expect. In contrast, Crew Dragon features a sleek, futuristic interface dominated by large, responsive touchscreens, akin to piloting a high-tech tablet rather than a relic from the Apollo era. This system streamlines astronaut interaction with the spacecraft, presenting real-time data and controls in a user-friendly format. Crucially, it also includes a manual override capability, allowing crew members to take direct command if automated systems falter. This blend of automation and human control proved invaluable during Crew Dragon's operational history, offering a level of flexibility and reassurance that Starliner's dated controls could not match. Spacesuit compatibility emerged as another pivotal differentiator, further tilting the scales toward Crew Dragon. Boeing designed Starliner's spacesuits to integrate with its own life support architecture, a reasonable choice in isolation, but one that became a liability when the spacecraft faltered. When NASA opted to return Williams and Wilmore via Crew Dragon, they discovered that Starliner's suits were incompatible with SpaceX's systems, necessitating a switch to SpaceX's custom-fitted suits. These suits, sleek and form-fitting, are engineered from the ground up to mesh seamlessly with Crew Dragon's environmental controls, ensuring a closed-loop system that maximizes safety and comfort. Each suit is tailored to its wearer, incorporating advanced materials and connectors that interface directly with the spacecraft's life support ports. Perhaps the most decisive factor in NASA's preference for Crew Dragon was re-entry safety, an area where Starliner's deficiencies were particularly alarming. The re-entry phase, where a spacecraft must withstand temperatures exceeding 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as it plunges through Earth's atmosphere, is among the most perilous segments of any mission. Starliner's heat shield, intended to protect the crew capsule during this fiery descent, raised serious concerns following the CFT mission. Engineers identified potential vulnerabilities in its design and performance, exacerbated by the spacecraft's propulsion troubles, which could have compromised its ability to maintain the precise orientation needed for a safe re-entry. NASA, unwilling to gamble with astronaut lives, deemed Starliner's uncrewed return in September 2024 the safer option, leaving Williams and Wilmore aboard the ISS. However, despite being prioritized by NASA for many missions, SpaceX's Dragon will not take over all missions in the program entirely, even if Starliner continues to face issues and delays. NASA won't throw Boeing under the bus. Its position is clear. The SpaceX Dragon is not enough. The agency wants two commercially operated transport options to carry astronauts to the space station. The main goal of the agency's commercial crew program is two unique human spaceflight systems. Steven Sykoloff, NASA spokesperson, said, NASA is evaluating options for another test flight of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner commercial crew vehicle before having the vehicle begin regular missions to the International Space Station. At a briefing after the return of a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft to complete the Crew-9 mission to the station on March 18th, Steve Stick, NASA commercial crew program manager, said the agency expected another Starliner test flight with or without people on board before beginning crew rotation missions with the vehicle. What we'd like to do is that one flight and then get into a crew rotation flight, he said. So, the next flight up would really test all the changes we're making to the vehicle, and then the next fight beyond that, we really need to get Boeing into a crew rotation, so that's the strategy. The changes to Starliner involve modifications to its propulsion system, which suffered helium leaks and thruster failures on the crew flight test CFT mission to the station last year. 
Those issues were serious enough for NASA to decide to bring Starliner back uncrewed, requiring NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, who flew to the station on Starliner for a short duration stay, to remain on the station through the end of the Crew-9 mission. The thing that we need to solidify and go test is the prop system in the service module, he said. We need to make sure we can eliminate the helium leaks, eliminate the service module thruster issues that we had on docking. That test flight could be an uncrewed mission, but would be able to support crews. Even if we were to fly the vehicle without a crew in the return, he said, we want that to be crew capable. So we want it to have all the systems in place that, that we could fly a crew with. Neither NASA nor Boeing have said much about those efforts since Starliner returned to Earth uncrewed last September. At a separate briefing on March 7th before the Crew-10 launched to the station, Stitch said that the agency and the company were making good progress on those issues and had closed out 70% of the in-flight anomalies from the CFT mission. The propulsion problems, though, were still being studied, with more testing planned. He said at the March 18th briefing that he believed Boeing remained committed to Starliner despite the difficulties and the large losses the company has recorded on it. The company reported charges against earnings of more than half a billion dollars on Starliner in 2024, with cumulative charges over the life of the program of just over $2 billion. Boeing, all the way up to their new CEO, Kelly Ortberg, has been committed to Starliner, he said, citing as evidence the level of effort the company is putting in to test new seals to eliminate helium leaks and multifaceted tests of thrusters. I see a commitment from Boeing to continue the program. They realized that they have an important vehicle, and we were very close to having the capability that we would like to field. Other than the propulsion system, Stich said that Starliner has provided NASA with much of the data needed to certify the vehicle for crewed flights. Any test flight, he said, would be in the post-certification phase of Boeing's current contract, although it was not clear if it would count as one of six such post-certification missions included in that contract. Stich said there was no rush to decide on the plans for Starliner including when it could start crew rotation missions. SpaceX will fly the next such mission, Crew-11, which is scheduled for launch as soon as the latter of July. That is driven by plans for a Cargo Dragon mission set to launch in August and remain at the station for much of the fall to test its ability to reboost the station. NASA has not yet decided if Crew-11 will be followed by another Crew Dragon mission, Crew-12, or the first Starliner crew rotation flight. We probably have a little bit more time as we get into the summer and understand that the testing we're going to go do to make that decision, he said. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.